in an artist's studio that there'd be loads of pencils lying around the place but honestly it's a bit like in the house where there's no there's never a paper and a piece of paper and a pen for you to write notes and things on um pencils sort of come and go like pin cushions they wander around so i'm going to cut that out using my paper scissors so as not to blunt my fabric ones it seems to cut the um fabric reasonably when it's got this paper ironed on and uh, which is good because if I'm cutting this fabric on its own it's not very easy I have to say it's lining fabric and it's very kind of I don't know it's got a great lot of wobble to it <laughs> shall we say so with this now you've got to take this paper backing off and I'm sure that most of you will know, and if you don't know, well, I shall show you. I use a pin. Sorry, that was a bit quick, wasn't it? I use a pin sometimes if it's difficult to get hold of the edge. You can stick a pin in the back, as there's a hot tip, and if you just carefully just sort of slit up through the paper, then you can get a little bit of the paper to pull off, you see, like that. That's awfully clever, isn't it? And then the rest, oops. Sometimes, however, if you haven't ironed it down very well, the paper and the webbing come off together. There we go, that's going to be okay. There's enough of it stuck down. Just take it steady, there we go. It's nice, isn't it? And that will go onto here. And um, I shall iron that on like that. And then I'm just going to stitch around it. And then I'm going to cut around it and I will dissolve the paper. But I thought I'll just show you these. These I found. I had some um, millinery wire in and I don't know if you can see that. Is it better to show you against something pink possibly? Yes there. That's nice isn't it? Look I found this lovely millinery wire which is very thin and fine um, but it's got uh, like cotton wrapping around the outside of it so it's got a nice fabricy feel to it and I'm going to use that for the antennae of my butterflies. Um, and I thought, well, I might either I might either do the antennae like that, or I might do them a little bit more exciting, look like that. Isn't that fun? So there might be a mixture. I don't know. Uh, the jury's out, but I do quite like that. I think either of them would look nice, and they just add a bit of fun to the to the butterfly. So let's get that stitched and move it on. Okay, so I have now. Iron that piece down and stitched it. I've just done a simple little couple of running stitches around the outside. The nice thing about using something like bond web is it's quite useful because it does reduce the fraying of your of your fabrics, which is quite helpful with, especially with something like this, which is man-made and it doesn't half look. You can see all the bits that have come off on my fingers there. Maybe it frays like bilio, and also it can make it a little bit stiffer for stitching, as well as obviously holding it in place while you do your stitching. So that's quite good, really. I haven't yet decided exactly how I'm going to stitch the antennae on, but I wanted to wait until I've actually dissolved the... Um, see, I think that's going to look quite nice. I wanted to wait until I've dissolved this and got it dried, and then I will think about... I might put a, a second layer of fabric on here, or I might put a layer of fabric on the back like that and, and hide them underneath, sort of stitch around the edges and hide them underneath or something. It's all exploration. I haven't done this before quite like this. Um, the antenna I did on these little butterflies was just some thick, I don't know if you can see that, was just some thickish thread that I had in, so they just kind of waggle around a bit. So I'm going to cut around the outside of this, I'm going to get rid of, when you do use anything that's soluble, it's a good idea to get rid of the excess, um, so that you don't have to spend ages kind of washing it away, which actually with the paper isn't too bad a job really it uh, solubilizes quite quickly and um, the glue ones that I've, I've used in the past which I'm trying not to use now because I've discovered that they're made of PVA um, somebody kindly told me that you can get alginate uh, versions which I haven't yet found but I'm still looking I'm sure it'll show up I just didn't want to be putting glue down I'm slowly trying to make my practice a bit more eco-friendly. Um, I upcycle everything that I can and I use green energy in my studio. 
Right, there we go. See, that looks quite nice, just like that, really. Apart from the fact that I got that wrong. <laughs> so I'm going to just go, I'm going to pin this out. What I do, right, is I will show you what I do, actually, um, apart from the wetting bit, because that's a bit awkward. I don't want to splash my camera. I'll just show you this next bit. Okay, so this is this is another hot tip. If you're using soluble uh, fabrics and things, and you're doing quite delicate structures, it's really helpful uh, to pin them out either after you've soaked them or I'm going to pin this on here while I let the water drip onto it. So I'm going to turn it over onto this side so that the paper side is uppermost. And this is this is a horrible piece of old polystyrene that came with some packaging. I've had it for absolutely donkey's years and I just use it for this purpose really. It's very useful for pinning these out onto and um, it means the butterfly also, you could leave it to dry like this, it'll help keep the shape of whatever you've done, if you've done a very lacy structure. Because um, obviously this has got this has got fabric behind it which will help keep its shape. But if you've literally just done stitching into the soluble uh, material, you know, this will help keep the shape of whatever you're doing. So I'm gonna go and run this under the tap and then it'll get dried and then I'll be able to show you what it looks like and we'll see what's next. Okay, so I'm just fiddling about with my uh, dried butterflies. You can hear them rustling now because they've got paper on the back. And the paper, what the paper does is it makes it stiff. Now, it looks a bit weird like this, okay? So that's that's the back side, as it were, where the paper is. This, this is the front side, which hasn't changed that much, but what I like is when I hold it up in the window, if I hold it up to the light, I'd, I'd have to show you this, perhaps uh, actually against the window. Let's just see if we can do that. If I just, I'll just tilt you up a moment, ladies and gentlemen. I shall just tilt you up. You can see all the debris on my, on my desk. If I hold this up in the window, as it were, you see, it makes it look different, doesn't it? If I turn it around the other way, let's try it the other way. What I like is how the paper sort of breaks up the pattern and the light shining through makes it look a bit more complicated, but you still get to see the pretty <laughs> the pretty mistake, there's me saying it wouldn't show up, but you know what, I think I might just leave it as is and see if anybody notices. So let's just tilt you back down again, let's tilt you back down again past all the all the clutter and stuff, back down to my little, this is my little filming area. And so I've, these are the ones I've made, that's that one that I showed you making. This one I really like, it's got this sort of tie-dyed fabric that I've used and it looks really natural. Um, I think what I'm going to have to do is put some fabric on this side as well to make it so it's got a body on either side. And when I hang them in the window, you'll get to see, you know, which ever side is twirling around because they're going to be hanging on a wire, on a, a fishing wire, just a piece of fishing wire, so they can turn around and just move in the breeze a little bit. So they've got a bit of movement to them. Um, I was thinking about wiring and doing all sorts. I had all these mad thoughts in the middle of the night about how I was going to make them work. But I think, as per usual, it is keep it simple. Just go, what, what's the simplest thing that's going to look nice? Um, this one I did, it was a bit of an experiment. And I have to say, I don't really like it very much. The wrought iron effect, sort of curly-whirly-swirlies, look quite nice. But because it's got a very plain fabric, it doesn't work quite as well, but perhaps if I layer that, if I was to layer that up with something else, I don't know where it would work with this. I might have to use a pink. Um, you know, it's quite possible I could. No, I don't think it works with the yellow. I'll have a, I'll have a play around. It might work if I put some pink lace onto it as well. Otherwise, that's just an experiment that didn't work. And the important thing is, I had a go. You know. Sometimes I think we can be very picky as well, you know, our little inner inner critic says, oh no, that's rubbish. But actually, you know, there might be some saving grace in what you've made that you're not seeing. See, when I'd, if I do it like that, you get to see the lovely, lovely colour of it, which is kind of what I was going for. So as I say, I might just put something on the back of that that might help layer it up. And um, the other colour I've used is yellow. This is a very vibrant, fluorescent-y sort of yellow. And that's the back of it. 
I just love, I love this soluble paper. I love what it does. I love how it changes and I love how you don't really have any control of how it turns out exactly because it all depends on how much you wash away and the power of this. I had the tap turned on quite slowly really because once it hits this surface when it's all wet, it's just paper pulp. If you've ever made handmade paper, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, and then I, I then I get it all dried off. So the idea is that what I'm going to do next is um, I want to do some layering. I want to have these with sort of a feeling of um, not just a single butterfly. I think I think anyway at the moment. Um, I want to have it feeling as though it's got sort of layers going on, but I'm not quite sure exactly how I'm going to do that yet. So I'm going to have a little play around and perhaps I'll just show you when they're all finished and done. I need to make some more bases anyway, like this, um, in some different colours. I want to make some in the same colours and some in different colours. I don't know if I'm going to make different shapes or not, or different sizes. I haven't quite, I haven't quite decided that bit yet. You know how it is. But I will let you see them when I've got them done. And these, as I say, are going in a nice window and I hope they'll be very pretty. And over here, if I show you over here, these are my finished ones that I've got done. And you can see they've now got antennae on, which are really fun. So if I hold this one up, you can see, uh, see the little white antenna on there. So this is the first one that I made, and it had this nice tie-dye fabric, and I've put a bit of gold stuff on top of there. On the other side, I actually stitched another piece of the same fabric on. So what I've got is a, a sort of a delicate colourful flowery butterfly collection of things and I think they're going to look all right they're just for a window display so they'll be fine and um, look at those I love the antennae so I'm just all done now with my butterflies and I hope that you've enjoyed the last couple of videos this was something a little bit different there wasn't a lot of texture going on but I thought it was quite nice to do something um, where I actually showed some what I've called prop, proper machine embroidery where you're actually doing an outline and um, it's a little bit neat and tidy but you know as I always say if you do a wobbly line don't worry about it if you're free machining and you're just new to it because you just add another wobbly line and it looks fantastic and from a distance nobody will know if you're long as we, especially especially if you don't point it out to people you don't say oh I made a terribly wobbly line here you just say isn't my work beautiful so um, I have got now baskets with fabric in. I've got a hoolie in the studio that needs tidying up. So I think I'm going to be doing that next. So I don't quite know what's going to be next as per usual. I think, you know, when you've done a few things and setting up the exhibition was lovely and doing the butterflies has been very nice. Um, I have got one or two things in my head that I'd like to do. Somebody's made a suggestion, somebody's given me a commission, and you know, I always say that you know what is going to happen is going to happen, and I don't worry about it. I just think, well, I'll show up in here, I start the camera rolling, the words just sort of appear like magic, and I start playing with the fabrics, and then stuff can just begin to appear. I think it's very hard to start from a blank sheet sometimes, which is why. I think it's really cool if you just keep a keep a piece. My top tip, right? Here's a top tip just popped into my head, is keep a piece of work that isn't finished. You know, don't rush to finish absolutely everything because if you've got a half finished piece, it's almost easier to start again with that. Even if he's a very radical thing, even if you just cut it up, even if you really hate it so much, you actually just want to cut it up and turn it into something else. So uh, so I think that's all from me for now. As I say, I hope you enjoyed this little couple of videos and maybe it's inspired you to go off and make some beautiful butterflies because here in the UK it is summer and it's really nice to celebrate that. So I say bye for now and I'll see you again very soon.
Papá, 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 papá.